has the power to change your life upon your hearing and believing. God, I thank you for his word. I don't know what your situation is this morning. I don't know where things are. I don't know how things are lining up. But the word of God has the power to change your life, transform your life. And the good news is, is powerful. It is life changing. And as we put our faith in it, it, it ignites for us a light and illumination that can only come from God. I'm glad about that. That's all we need is the word of God. And when we yield and surrender to its power and its authority, it can change our life. Amen. Amen. Many times people look for many, many things in their lives, but the word of God word. has the power to change yes, yes, your yes. life. Thanks. I don't care what your situation is this morning. I don't know where you find yourself at, but the word of God, just one word from God, can transform your situation and your circumstance when you put your trust in what God has said. Oh, Lord, I thank you. The choir was singing, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Just one word can bring you to a place and know that God has your back. And he is your shepherd. And when I put my trust in him, I can want for nothing because God is more than able. Oh, God, thank you for the good news. Thank you for the revelation of your word that is able to do for me what I cannot do for myself. The Apostle Paul out of the book of Romans or the church, uh, his message to the church in Rome said, listen, Romans 1 and 16 says, for I am, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ or the good news, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, mm -hmm. to the Jew first and also to the Greek. He said, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. He said, it is revealed from faith to faith. For as it is written, the just yeah. shall live not by fear, not by feeling, but by faith. Because in faith, my life can be transformed. Amen. Many people will say, listen, how do I change my life? Have faith in God. And God's word has the power, the message of the gospel has the power to change your life. Amen. Mm. Somebody said immediately. Somebody says, how long does it take? But understand this. When you take God at his word, God is up to something. He's in the process of moving on your behalf when you take him at his word. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. The gospel is somewhat, if you will, an inconvenient truth because it is highly unlikely. Amen. Because the just shall live by faith. It is highly unlikely. It is unnatural to believe. Because the word of God is not natural, it's spiritual. Because the Bible says that you must be born again. Yes. So in other words, to embrace it, to receive it, I have to receive it from a higher power, a higher order. So I must put my faith in what I've heard the word of God. It says the just shall live, not by faith, not by feelings, but by the word of God. Live by faith. Amen. So our, our, my process is this, is that as I put my trust in him, yes. God has the power and the authority to change my life. Jesus told Nicodemus, a religious man in the middle of the night, who came to say, Lord, I know that you are from God. I know that you have, amen, that characteristic about you because the words you speak are not natural. The words you speak are spiritual, and I just want to understand them. And Jesus said to him, listen, St. John 3 and 6, he said, that which is born of flesh is flesh. Yes. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not, Marvel not that I 
saying to you, you must be glory to God. You must be born again. Amen. So the capacity and the ability, amen, to embrace spiritual things come from hearing the good news. And when I express my faith in what I've heard, God has the power to change my life and transform my life into that which I believe when I put my trust in his word. Yeah. Woo, glory. Yeah. For the just shall live by faith. We trust God, we take him at his word. We believe him. When God says something in his word, we embrace it. We, we listen, we cling to it. Why? Because it has the power to keep us, transform us, and change us as we put our trust in his word. Oh, God, I thank you for your word. You. In the middle of the night, the Lord can speak to you and say, listen, didn't I tell you I'd never leave you nor forsake you? Yeah. The Lord can speak to you and say, didn't I say, listen, I'd be your sufficiency? Didn't I tell you that, listen, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper? Yeah. Didn't I tell you this or didn't I tell you that? Because his word has the power and authority to be good news to the soul. So that we can, with confidence, say that the Lord is my helper and my strength. The Lord is all I need for whatever yes. I need. Thank you, Lord, for your word. That rests in my spirit so I can be energized and ignited in my hope and in my confidence that God is still able, regardless if the world passes away. The Bible declares that his word, that which was spoken out of his mouth, will be around forever when I put my trust, glory to God, in him. Yes. Marvel not, he told Marvel Nicodemus, not. you must be born again. Yes. You must see it as I see it. And the only way we can see it as he sees it is to believe his word. Oh God, I thank you for your word. In our text, Jesus gives a simple illustration of the power of his word. In one word, come unto me, for come. An invitation the Lord gave, and he always used parables to illustrate a spiritual principle by using natural means. So Jesus says, listen, in our verse, in our scripture here, he says, a certain man had a great supper. He asked many, obeyed many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden or, or invited, come for all things are now made ready. Jesus said a certain man, and you have to consider the fact that most of the time the individuals they, he referred to when he talked of a certain man, he was usually talking of the Lord of the house. Someone who had the authority even to call anybody or had the authority in the house. And so here's one, he made a great supper. This thing was not something that was, uh, listen, something done in the moment. This was something that the Lord of the house took time to do and prepare. And the Bible says that he invited guests and he summoned them personally because he knew them. Mm -hmm. He made a special effort to invite them. Uh -huh. Have you ever had anybody invite you some, to, some, to some place? I mean, the least you can do if they invite you is let them know personally or by some kind of correspondence that you can't make it if you can't. So the householder sent out his servant and said, go to these particular individuals and invite them to have fellowship. Because supper back in them days was more than just eating. They handled business. Yeah. They communed one with another. They got to know one another. See, oftentimes we live in a fast food uh, economy, and so we don't even have time to swallow our food. We don't have time to talk and to enjoy the company of one another. Amen. Amen. But he sent out a request, an invitation. I was standing in line uh, one day at the VA, 
And I said to uh, one of the other uh, veterans, and he was younger than me, so I know he had probably been, uh, just got out of the military or been involved maybe in the Iraqi type wars. And I said to him, how you doing? He said, I'm doing all right. I said, isn't this something? I said, in the service, we always use that term, hurry up and wait, because we stand around <laughs> and they tell us to get ready, get ready, get ready, but wait. So hurry up and wait was a common uh, uh, term. He said, oh, he said, it made, they made it worse for me. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, when I was in the service, he said, we get in line at the chow hall and they tell us, uh, 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 swallow the food and eat it and taste it later. I said, excuse me. <laughs> he said, they tell us to swallow the food and taste it later. You in a hurry. So I said, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, that was a little more rough on you than you were on me. But a special invitation was given to them to dine. Amen. To have fellowship. And, and look at the responses of them. One person made an excuse, I bought a piece of ground. Another person says, listen, I, I, I have some yoke and oxen I got to prove. And another one said, I just got married, I can't come. Mm -hmm. And the interesting part of this, it almost uh, reminds me of the scripture where it talks about the world, the flesh, and the devil. Mm -hmm. In other words, every excuse that could attack the soul was given to this Lord of the house for those that were invited not to attend. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible says that he had personally asked them to come to his house. Mm -hmm. Now, no doubt he knew them. No doubt he was aware of their schedule. But he thought that maybe, 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 there's a little conjecture here. He thought maybe you would take time if you had an invite. Glory to God that you would put aside some time to celebrate with me. Amen. All of them gave excuses for something they valued more than the invitation. And understand this, in the Eastern culture, it was almost a, a, a insult to reject an invitation because it wasn't just about food. It was more about fellowship and an act of friendship. Yes. It was, I want you in my company. I want you in my presence so that we can handle what we need to handle. So we can do what we need to do. One of my friends who served overseas and began to do civilian work, began to work for a lot of com uh, countries. And he said when he was in China or when he was in Turkey, he said when they would eat at the tables, he said, you had to go because if you didn't go, they would not do business with you. He said so oftentimes, he said you found yourself eating and drinking stuff that you didn't particularly care for in order to handle some business. Amen. So in the Eastern culture, it was, it was a grave mistake to reject an invite. It was something personal. It was something personal. Mm -hmm. It was something that the Lord of the house saw that it was necessary to invite you. He saw it as something needed. When Jesus himself sent out his 70 disciples, he gave them clear instruction yes. for those that rejected the invitation. Yes. He said, listen, and that's found in Luke 10 and 8. He said, he said, whatever city you enter into, and they receive you. He said, eat those things that are placed before you. He said, heal the sick and say unto them that the kingdom, give them the word in the process of communing with them and let them know that the kingdom of God is at their door. Let them know that I'm not just here to eat, but I'm here with a message to tell you that the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. Then he went on a little further. He said, whatever city you enter into, and they receive you up, now, go your way out of the street the same way you went in. He said, the same way you come out. And he said, wipe 
even the very dust from your feet. He said, because this will be an indictment against them for rejecting, glory to God, the invitation. In other words, the Lord says, if I invite you to come, it's not for you to reject it. Amen. Woo, glory. Thank you, Lord. He said, if I'm making the invitation, mm -hmm. he said, I'm the Lord of the house. Yes. And you should find it within your schedule mm -hmm. to say yes to the invitation. Yes, 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 yes. We live in a time today where there are no social skills. There's no social graces. I mean, folk don't say goodbye or hello. <laughs> folk don't say thank you or no thank you. There's not a level of graciousness to show that you appreciate even the smallest effort done for you on your behalf. But in these times, they took it as an insult because they always seen the one who was inviting or the person who did the inviting as a gracious host. Amen. Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. This was not a small thing. This was that which they said, listen, this is an honor to be invited. This is a privilege that someone will take the time yes. to invite me. Amen. Mm. But Jesus told the seven, listen, if they hear you and you minister the good news, he said, bless their house. Yes. But if they reject you, go out the same way you came in and wipe the dust. Oh, Glory to God you. off your feet. Yes. Because they rejected the invitation to come. Oh, God, I thank you for your word. Entertaining strangers is good news. Entertaining strangers is good news. I challenge anybody today to invite someone to believe the good news. Yes, yes. And it starts really with one word, come. 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 I believe that's the greatest message we can tell them is to come. Our Heavenly Father gave witness to, listen, the message and the messenger in his son, Jesus Christ, on the Mount of Transfiguration. He said this, Matthew 17 and 5, he said, this is my well-beloved son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Then he said, hear ye him. Hear him. Peter wanted to build a statue. Peter wanted to build a monument. But God told him, listen, hush. This is my beloved son. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hear ye him. Amen. You don't have time to do anything otherwise than hear. Because my son has the message. For he is the messenger with the good news. Yeah. Glory to God, I thank you for your word. Jesus made a personal invitation to Israel as a nation. In St. Matthew 11, 28, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor. Uh -huh. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden. And he said, I will give you rest. Yes. He said, take my yoke upon you, and learn of you me, because my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come. Huh. Come on and hear the good news. Because I have the answer for everything you need. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank he said, this is personal because I'm asking you personally to come. Jesus. And if you reject me, you reject the message. And if you reject the message, whoo, glory to God. He said, then you can't expect the power to follow. When you receive the message, the power follows. It flows through you. But he said, you reject it? He told the 70, he said, listen, shake the dust off your feet. 
of your feet yes. if they reject it. Entertain strangers. Mm. Entertain strangers. Yes. Now back to our text here. Now I'm going to read these next verses out of the New Living Translation. Let's go out of the New Living Translation. It said the servant from the 21st verse to the 23rd. It said the servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Uh -huh. After the servant had done this, he reported, there's still more room. So the master said, go into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that my house may be full. The Lord said, I want you to invite strangers. I want you to invite the uninvited. Because understand this, these folks were not on the guest list. They weren't part of the original entourage. For them that were part of the entourage had rejected glory to God the invitation. So the Lord said, I'm going to give you them to entertain which will be strangers. Go into the places that I don't normally frequent and entertain some strangers. Yes. Let them know that I'm trying to fill my house up. And they are invited. I want them to come. And he used the word here, he said compel, but he took it personal, amen. And the word compel uh, literally means to urge. In other words, don't drag them by the feet. As much as you like to drag them and pull them in, he said, I'd rather that you urge them to come. In other words, constrain them. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Constrain them to come. And really, when you constrain somebody, you convince them of the necessity of the need. Yes, yes, yes. You convince them that this is what you really need. Yeah. Now, the only thing you're presenting is the gospel. Yes. The only thing you're presenting to a stranger is the truth. Uh -huh. right. Jesus died and he rose again. Yes. He's coming back again. Yes. You need to be saved. You need to express Jesus Christ. You need to know him as your personal Savior. St. John 3.16, for God so loved the world yes, 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 yes. that he gave his only begotten. You compel them, you urge them by the truth so that they can be constrained to believe. Yes. It's almost like when Jesus in the fourth chapter of St. John was on his way and he told his disciples that I must needs go. There's a need in Samaria yeah. and I'm constrained, glory to God, to go. Yes, yes, yes. Because it's a need I have to fulfill so I can strain myself yes, yes. and go. Mm -hmm. Entertaining strangers yeah, thank you. is gospel ministry. Mm, 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 mm. He didn't have to know them. As a matter of fact, he didn't know them. But he said, invite them anyhow. And the only thing I want you to tell them is that they're invited to the master's house. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. I know what there'll be activity at the house. Because it's really not about the method. It's about the message. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's really not about the the means, because he was rich. The master was rich. He wasn't a poor man, a, a man hosting a dinner. But he was a rich man hosting a supper, a gathering, so that all that he would invite would be sufficiently taken care of. Mm -hmm. So you tell him it's not about the method. Who glory, it's about the message. So when you entertain a stranger in your journey of life, let them know that Jesus came and he died, glory to God, and he rose again yes. so that you and I might live. Yes. I understand more and more every day, every day that when John the Baptist was about the work of ministry and Jesus showed up one day at a baptism, John turned and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Yeah. He, he, he was impressed and he 
encouraged to tell them, listen, this is the message or messenger that I've been speaking out concerning the message. Amen. And if you get away from the message, oh God, oh Lord, you, 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 listen, you diminish the messenger. Amen. We talked in Sunday school this morning that if Jesus is not the rock, not. like he told Peter upon this rock, yeah. he's merely a footnote and not something you can press your foot on. He has to be the message because he is the messenger. Amen. Oh God, I thank you for your word. He said constrain him because the word of God is necessary and this is needed for them to hear. Do mm. you remember the response Jesus gave his disciples when they came back in the fourth chapter of St. John and saw him talking to a Samaritan woman? They were saying, why is he even talking to her? Why is he even around her? And Jesus said, mm. he said, I've had meat, glory to God, that you know not of. Yeah, you went into town to get some food, but while you were gone, I was tasting on some living bread, and I've had some meat that you know not of. The word of God is meat. The word of God is sustenance. The word of God is what we need yes. because we need it. Yes. So I compel and constrain my own spirit that when I get restless, I do like Hezekiah and turn my face to the wall so that I can be constrained and given what is needful, the word of God. Oh God, I thank you for your word. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 2, it says, be careful not to entertain strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels on the way. Don't hesitate to speak the good news to them that were not invited. Because you don't know if you're speaking to an angel. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Or oh, an unbeliever who's about to become a believer. You don't know how the message is going to affect their lives. It's not about the method. You can do anything and everything to try to win somebody, but without the message, there is no messenger. Entertain strangers is gospel ministry. Telling someone of the good news of Jesus Christ. The Lord gave the universal command to his disciples to preach the gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, go. The Bible says in St. Mark 16 and 15, they said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said the same thing in Matthew 18 and 19. He said, go ye therefore. In other words, their response was to go and speak the message of the gospel. Amen. Jesus being at the forefront of the conversation. Be Jesus being not only the message, but, but the strength behind the word. Amen. Oh God, I thank you for the word. Even when John was in a low point in his life and needed to know whether what he had accomplished would have value. The Bible says in, in St. Luke 7, 22, John himself had to witness the message of the gospel because he knew that his, he, he was off the scene. He had decreased. But he needed to know that the word was being increased because he was the forerunner of the message. Yes, he was. He needed to be, listen, he needed to be convicted and convinced that the message was a reality to them that heard it. The Bible says in St. Luke 7, 23, 2, then Jesus answered and said unto them, go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. How the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and I like this, and to the poor the gospel is preached. He said, John, don't deceive yourself. He said, the bottom line is, yes, the works of the ministry are being manifest, but understand this, the gospel is being preached. Yes, thank you, Lord. 
So John, understand this. You were a forerunner to the messenger. But let's make this clear, John. The message is transforming lives. Yes. Jesus, Jesus is alive and well. Thank you, Lord. I'm always amazed that when Jesus sent out the 70, he told them how to respond to them that accepted as well as rejected. And then he told them, listen, he said, I know you're excited about all that there is to get excited about. But he said, don't be excited about the works. Don't be excited about the method. But be excited because your name is written in heaven. Be excited that you've been saved by the awesome power of the word of God. Amen. Be excited that your life has been transformed as you put your faith in his word. Amen. He declared it in St. Luke 10 and 20. He said, listen, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are something unto you, but rather rejoice because your name, Lord, thank God for salvation, yeah. that your name is written in heaven because you believe. Amen. God called me an uninvited and made me chosen. Yeah. God called you an uninvited and made you chosen. Why? Because now you believe. I always pray here at New Beginnings that God would bless them that are part of your circle of influence. Understand this, we Gentiles were not part of the circle of influence. But God went into the hedges, oh God I thank you, and the highways and spoke the gospel of good news. Yes, thank you Lord. And we were transformed. And because he entertained us who were strangers, we became witnesses to the gospel. And our lives were changed as a result of the living word that is able not only to change you, oh God, I thank you, but able to keep you when you put your trust in God's word. So don't worry about the method. Don't worry if you have the means. Worry more about the message and the messenger. Oh God, I thank you. It is not about your ability. Oh, Lord, it's not about what you know, but in this case, it's who you know. Who? Jesus said in St. Matthew 4 and 4, he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, what? but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Entertaining strangers is a ministry. And that ministry to us is that God invited us by his spoken word. He compelled us. He constrained us. Understand this. Some of us came kicking and screaming. Amen. But God compelled us. Some of us couldn't make up our mind. But God still urged us. And when we said yes to his word, we began a transformation that can only come through believing the message. Amen. The good news of Jesus Christ. The good news that God is able to keep them that put their trust in him. The good news that if I trust him and take him at his word, yes. God is able to bring to pass that which I'm trusting in. Yes, yes. I was outside of the ark of safety. I was outside of the circle of influence, but God reached and into the hedges of my life, the highways of my life, and compelled me and constrained me and urged me to hear the message. I know you weren't initially invited, but now God is saying, listen, I'm about entertaining strangers because it's ministry. I'm about entertaining you because one word from God, mm, received by you, can change your life. Thank you, Lord. Entertaining strangers is gospel ministry. All 
we are responsible for, I always tell you the beginning, we set the table here. But our responsibility is to hand out the invitation and tell women, men, boys and girls, you must be plural. Born again. Uh -huh. No other way. No. Huh. No other method. No. You must be born again. And when you receive the message, yes. mm, expect it to change your life. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. You can take testimony from a Philippian jailer. Mm. You can take testimony from an apostle, or should I say Saul of Tarsus. You can take testimony from the disciples who ran and left Jesus abandoned and yet found their way back to Galilee mm. because they believed the word yeah. and it changed their life such so that they realized that if it wasn't for the Lord on their side, they don't know where they would be Jesus. because God kept them yeah. in life and shielded them even in death so that they could give God some glory. Mm. We think about the word of God. We think about the patriots before us, before us. And God has given them to us as an example. 12th chapter of Hebrews, and I'm finishing up. Wherefore, see, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Yes. Let us lay aside every weight every. and the sin that doth so easily beset us. Looking unto Jesus. Oh God, I thank you. The author and the finisher of our faith. Yes, thank you. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of Almighty God. Entertaining strangers is what God did and it is still our ministry as believers. Amen. Luke 14 and 23, and the Lord said unto the servant, go out yeah. into the highways and hedges yes. and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Entertaining strangers, beloved, is still good news. Amen. Maybe there's someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Our position, our responsibility is to let each and every one we have opportunity to minister to and minister over. That the Bible says if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be, not might be, but we shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. You confess what you believe. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Yes. And hearing by the word of God. 